Hey folks, it's Ray at DCAmerica.com here, and today we've got a complete user interface walkthrough of the Garmin VivoActive 4 watch. Uh, now this is a really straightforward walkthrough from start to finish, nothing fancy here. Uh, so if some people might find this boring, no big deal. There's plenty of other cool videos you can watch, link to something random up above there. Um, but for some of you that want to see how this whole watch works from start to finish, got a one camera shot. Uh, we're just going to walk through it. It's going to take, I don't know, like 10, 12, 15, 20, 90 minutes. Who knows how long it'll take until I get through kind of all of the options and where you are. Oh, and before we go too far, I just published my full in-depth written review. So that's where I cover a lot of things like GPS accuracy and heart rate accuracy and all the accuracies, what things worked well, what things don't work well, what things I like, what things I hate. Um, all that's covered in that massive sprawling, like, I don't know, 10,000 word review there. So check that out. Uh, maybe I'll do a separate review video. But again, this is more just about the user interface video. Uh, and in fact, this video goes into that review, which is kind of why I'm doing it. Uh, so right here is the watch face. This is customizable. You can download your own watch faces. You can download third-party watch faces. I've just got kind of the default one right there. Um, also, right now, the uh, brightness level is about 35 or 40% on the watch. You can increase that if you want to or decrease it. Uh, but I just got it kind of set for that default right there. As I go ahead and I touch it, you'll see it does the turn on the backlight. And I've set the backlight right now for this demo to be able to show you this uh, for the long setting. So typically, probably leave it on short, but just in order so it doesn't always go on and off constantly, I've set it for long. So right now, these are all the different widgets. There's a whole ton of widgets, um, each showing different things. This first one is the My Day widget. So it's showing things like steps and intensity minutes, uh, basically kind of my overall day from an activity standpoint. I can tap into that and I can see this is the intensity minutes for the week. Uh, this is the stairs for the day and then for the week. Down here, you see the steps for the day and then the week. And then here is the calories on the day as well as the hydration for the day. I can then use the buttons on the side right there. So you have the back button right there, the confirmation button to get back uh, to either the watch face or the widget roll. So you saw it first took me there and then back to the watch face. These are my health stats. So heart rate, stress level, body battery, respiration rate. Uh, each of these I can dive into and see here's the last four hours worth. I've been taking photos for the last hour or so. So that's where that gap is right there. My stress level, I can then tap this as well. See stress over the last 15 hours. Uh, I go back there using that button. I can see my body battery, which is showing me kind of like Street Fighter style, how I feel. I'd say it's generally pretty accurate. Uh, I'm not sure if I can quantify like to a precise amount percentage wise if it's accurate, but I would say like if it says I'm feeling 90%, I'm feeling in that rough range. If it says I'm feeling 15 to 20%, that's usually pretty accurate as well. So going back down here, respiration rate. So there we go right there. Um, right now it says check watch fit because of course the watch isn't on, so it's not gonna use that uh, sensor on the back if the, my body is not on there. If I go ahead and hold my finger there for just a second, you should see it'll get that, let me get this to show up here. Uh, it's a little tricky to show on the camera sometimes, uh, but eventually the light will go on in the back, which is the green LEDs. And from there, uh, it'll start measuring that. So I'm gonna go back here again, scroll on down. This is my uh, workout history. So if I go here on this week, you can see on Sunday there, I've got a workout, there we go. Um, and it's gonna show this little map of my particular workout. I can tap it again and see this sort of cool heart rate graph. This was an interval, a track workout I did. And if I scroll down here, you can see some overview stats. When you complete the workout, you get more detailed stats uh, than you do right here. This is just sort of that summary uh, picture of that. Like, I wish you could see the laps and whatnot, like it shows you at the end of the workout. I don't know why they're different screens, but you usually get laps, time and zone, and so on. Uh, you don't get that in just a summary view here. So going back there, uh, we go scroll down a little bit more. Uh, I don't have any female tracking on this right now, of course, because I'm not female, but that is something that you can go ahead and add there on this true in a lot of Garmin's watches. This is my 24 by seven heart rate that we saw a little bit earlier. If I tap into that, you can see my seven day uh, resting heart rate um, over the last seven days. I've been doing a bunch of travel, so it's been kind of all over the place, uh, but that's pretty normal for when I usually travel. Here's that body battery like I talked about earlier. And then if I tap that, you can see the stress um, overlaid on top of that body battery for the day so far, last 15 hours or so uh, at this point. So going down, there we go, we've got hydration. Uh, so this allows you to track hydration. The presumption here is that you're tracking water. Uh, typically speaking, water, uh, the more you drink, uh, it'll reduce kind of your cravings, which in turn means that you're probably gonna lose weight. So if you're looking to lose weight, uh, there's a lot of guidance out there. So to drink lots and lots of water, and there's lots more reasons for that that you know, we can get into or Google can get into for you. Uh, so if I add a cup, I can just simply tap right there to add two cups of water. I can increase that. You can customize what the term cup means. Uh, so in this case, um, 
Um, they're literally just cups, but you can customize how many ounces each one of these vessels is, like eight ounces or 12 ounces or whatever the case may be. You can also go into metric as well if you want to. I just set up, set up like this stuff right now. And then, uh, so I think it went too far away there, but there's a breathing. Uh, this is pulse ox, so pulse ox um, You can go ahead and get that reading there on the back. So if I turn this over really quick, you should see a red light. Uh, can't quite do it fast enough, um, but it'll show a red light there, which is actually that reading uh, my pulse ox values. Go back and escape out of that there. Uh, and these are some of the widgets you can customize. Like I turned on the golf one just to show you golf, but I don't normally have it on. Uh, and then back into steps and so on. So those are all the widgets. You can customize which widgets you want and don't want. They're all there. Uh, but for most people, it's going to be about sports. And so in order to access sports, you're going to press this top right hand button right there. You'll press that, and now it'll go ahead and show you sport modes. You have run, bike, indoor, but if you go down here, and tap that little thing there, you can see all the sport modes that you can choose from. Uh, there are many, many, many to choose from here. You can add more. There's a handful more in there. Uh, the ones that are somewhat unique on the venue and the Vivo Active 4 Series watches is clicking the yoga button right there. There's yoga, Pilates, and uh, the breathing uh, breathwork pieces. And what this allows you to do is choose one of these kind of custom, or not custom, I guess they're pre-structured workouts. So you can see right here, sun salutations. And if I look into the steps of that, um, I will go ahead and I'll see each one of these poses. And so if I click on one of these poses or tap on one of these poses, it'll give me a little animation of that particular pose uh, and what I'm supposed to be doing for that pose. If I go back, I can choose uh, this one right here and it'll show me what I'm supposed to do for each pose. The idea being, if I go ahead and go back and say to do the workout, I'll click start up here in the right hand corner, and normally it would find my heart rate. Um, so you can see that green optical heart rate sensor on the back uh, glowing quite brightly right now. That's looking for my heart rate there. I can also use a chest heart rate strap if I wanted to, uh, but we'll just go ahead and I'll press this top right button right there. And it's gonna show you how long to hold that pose for, 45 seconds in this case. And then it's gonna show you that pose in just a second. So in this case, you'll see what it's going to do. Uh, pretty straightforward pose. You're not moving this particular one. So I'm going to go ahead and just move to the next one right there by pressing the bottom right hand button. Uh, it's going to tell you what to do for this particular pose. And then it'll show you that image as well, that little animation uh, for that pose. And you can see around the edge here, it's showing you how much time is left in that particular pose. It goes on to the next one and it keeps repeating. Uh, and I can also go ahead and swipe down and see different data fields. Uh, so you can see how much time left in that pose there. I go to the next data field, I've got 10 seconds before it goes away. You can see this clock kind of going down. Uh, I can go to the normal data field, see stress, respiration rate, heart rate, uh, and the timer. And again, these are fairly quick at 10 seconds a piece. Uh, honestly, they're probably a little bit complex to do all these poses uh, for 10 seconds while looking at your wrist and getting them right uh, versus something like this. 30 seconds is a little more reasonable. But of course, you can make up your own if you want to, though when you make up your own, you don't actually see the animations, which is kind of a shame. Uh, but they have, I think, three or four different yoga workouts in here that you can choose automatically. So we'll go ahead and stop this right now. Uh, we'll discard this particular workout right there. Discard. There we go, get it back. Okay, perfect. And you can choose other workouts. So let's just choose run, for example. Uh, in this case, it would find GPS. And while I'm near a window, I'm also on the fourth floor out of I'm like 17 floors. So probably not gonna find GPS, which is fine. Uh, you can swipe up though, and you can choose your structural workouts if you wanted to. So you could do like quarter mile repeats, for example. Uh, I can see the steps for those repeats and it would iterate each one of those uh, workout sections for me. I can also download or create custom workouts on the Garmin mobile app and I can download it for the watch. Um, or you can just simply do your own just thing just by pressing the upper right hand button right here. So I'll press that there. That starts the workout. It starts the timer uh, and record, you know, time, distance, pace, heart rate. And each one of these fields is customizable. So we'll go back and I'll show you that in just a second here. Uh, so I'll click stop. Uh, again, we'll discard this one. And then as you go back, you can see in the settings here in just a moment uh, that I can customize each one of those data fields by down here. So settings, data screens, and you have one, two, three uh, core screens that you can customize. And then if I click on any one of these screens here, I can go into the layout so I can choose how many data fields I wanna show. So I can do one data field or two data fields or three or uh, four. And I believe there's two different ways. Uh, I guess just one way to show that four data fields. And then I can go ahead and I confirm that and then I can choose what I want um, on those data fields. So I'll click edit data fields and I can say, yep, this one will be uh, time, distance, pace, and heart rate. Um, but maybe up here, I wanna change that uh, pace to be my lap pace instead. Uh, and I can do that, no problem there. Uh, in fact, I typically, what I do when I run, usually I'm gonna customize this one down here. I'm gonna edit this to be uh, my time field, so lap time. 
I like my heart rate as is, but I also like my lap pace one. Uh, so like this would be a lap, uh, kind of a lap configuration or lap page configuration if I want that one right there. Uh, so you can see I can customize these. There's also the heart rate zone gauge that you get at the bottom there that will show your heart rate and the zones that it's in. Uh, so for every single sport that you have, you can customize those data screens. And then some sports also have different options like auto lap. I can turn that on or off. Uh, in this case, you can change the distance. You can't change the time, just the distance. I've got lap or distance set for metric on this watch right now. So that's why it's showing kilometers. I can turn on auto pause, which basically pauses the watch when you get to a stoplight or something like that. Or auto scroll, which will scroll through my screens automatically. And then the GPS options here, you've got GLONASS and Galileo. Right now, Garmin is saying for this new Sony chipset, new, I guess it's all relative, the last year's worth of Sony chipset, um, that it's all going to be, GLONASS is probably your best bet. Um, I think down the road, they'll switch over to Galileo. Like for me, I find that on the MediaTek media chipsets, I get better uh, GPS accuracy with the Galileo option. But right now, Garmin is saying most of their testing and whatnot has been done on GPS plus GLONASS. So anyways, those are some of your per sport setting options right there. We'll keep on going all the way back here, and we'll just go into the main settings option, which you can always access by pressing this lower right hand button right there. And you can see within settings, this is where you can configure each one of those different uh, workout apps, as they're called. Uh, apps is, is technically what a different workout uh, type is, but it's also what apps are when you download them from the Garmin Connect store. So you could have an app from a third party on here that looks kind of like a workout as well, or workout mode. Widgets are what we saw earlier, so you can see these widgets here. If you want to go ahead and customize those uh, or add more widgets, so uh, plenty more widgets there and then ones uh, as well you can get elsewhere. Going on back here, the controls menu is when you hold down this upper right hand button right there, it brings you to this menu and so you can customize this particular menu. Uh, it's just a, a way to quickly access uh, different things like quickly get to Spotify or to the wallet and so on. Click on back there. Uh, watch face, this is where you can choose a different watch face. Uh, now, unlike the Garmin Venue Watch, these are not live watch faces, uh, but in this case, your watch face is on 100% of the time. So Garmin Venue, you can do that as well. You get about two and a half or so days of battery life. In the case of the Vivo Active 4, you're getting in you know, roughly between five and eight days, depending on how lucky you are. I'd say probably closer to five than eight, uh, but at spec to eight days, it's always on all the time. So that's always something that it's kind of nice on some of these watches compared to some of the AMOLED screens where uh, it turns off after a while. And if I go into this, I can change the data that's shown on that particular watch face. So I can change uh, the data up top in the circle and the bottom right there. Uh, so I can choose instead of steps, I could say I want it to be, uh, let's see if I can do this right, here we go. Change it to stairs or intensity minutes and so on. Uh, so lots of options there. Um, and yes, my new GoPro uh, adapter has just shown up at the Amazon Locker. So I'll go pick that up in a little bit right there. Um, I was excited about new purchases here. Uh, so anyways, that's watch faces right there. Go back into settings. I went too far back there. Uh, go to settings and then we can see wrist heart rate. We can turn it on or off. We can turn on broadcasting over AMP+. Plus. Uh, no broadcasting over Bluetooth Smart at this point. Hopefully we'll see that down the road. Garmin just introduced that onto some of their Forerunner series watches. So that'd be really, really cool to see that there. There's my next thing that just showed up at the Amazon Locker. Probably gonna get a couple more here in a moment. I, hopefully none of them are, are super awkward. I think they're all just like GoPro stuff. Uh, turning on, there we go, or GoPro stuff. Like I said, lots of, these are all smart no smartphone notifications. So each one of that you saw they're coming in, is a smartphone notification coming in uh, from my phone straight into the watch, and I can just kind of clear those out and dismiss them there. Here's you can turn on Pulse Ox. Pulse Ox does burn through battery pretty uh, significantly, so just kind of keep that in mind there. Uh, now music here, uh, this we're going to dive through in just a second separately. But the thing I will note in here is that you can store multiple headphones. So right now I've got my Power Beats right there that will show in just a second, but I can add multiple headphones. So I can add, for example, my uh, AirPods, and let's see. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do that because it's probably paired on my phone at the moment. It's too close by. But uh, anyways, the point being, you can do that if you want to, which is sort of handy in this exact scenario where I may have the AirPods sometimes and my uh, Power Beats other times or something else and just to have them all there. So let's go ahead and go back um, all the way back to here. Uh, so you can see, by the way, I changed that metric now to my heart rate on the back there, um, but it's obviously not my wrist, so it's not going to see that. And I'm going to go to music. And now I'm going to go to the quick menu or the quick... Uh, controls menu by holding us in the upper right hand corner right there away and then I'm going to choose Spotify and now this gets me right into Spotify. Uh, now when I go ahead and open up my headphones, there we go, you'll see in just a second it should connect to it, there we go, just like that, so super super duper quick right there. Uh, and now I can go ahead and hit play and you can hear this music right there. 
let's see this one over here, um, playing right away. So it's cool, it just works there. I'm gonna stop it before I get like some sort of YouTube uh, DMCA violation. And if I go into this menu here, I can choose things from my Spotify library. In this case, I've synced the Summer Hits uh, playlist, if you will, from my Spotify library onto this watch. So it's totally on this watch. I do not need to have my phone nearby. I can go run far, far away from my phone. It'll be there. I don't know why. Sometimes I get the album icon and sometimes I don't. Uh, in this case, I don't. Uh, I can go and update the downloads if I wanted to. So if I was on a Wi-Fi network nearby, I could update my downloads and get anything that's changed for that playlist. I can edit downloads. I can also add a music right there. So I can go and choose from playlists, for example. Uh, and what it does, that's gonna pull up my Spotify account and then pull uh, the playlist from that. So I can go scroll through here and see different music that I have in my Spotify playlists. And then right here, it'll eventually show me um, the icons there for those. And again, sometimes it just takes a while to show those icons. And then I can tap one of them right there to go ahead and download it. Unfortunately, I'm at, as you saw, 5% battery. You need to be at 50% battery to download it. Uh, but once you do that, have it either plugged in or 50%, it'll download via Wi-Fi automatically so you have them for next time. The rough math on how long it takes to download is about eight songs per minute, give or take, um, which sounds kind of slow, but at the same time, like by the time you just plug it in and walk away for a couple minutes and come back, you probably got your playlist done. So you don't typically download like a new playlist for every single run, so not too much of a big deal. Um, uh, for me, the Spotify bit is awesome. They support other music platforms, including Deezer and uh, Amazon Music. So if you have Amazon Music already as part of like your Amazon Prime account, for example, that's on here. So you can just download those songs right to here and you'll be off and running. Uh, it's pretty darn cool. And you can see back here, I can skip songs. Uh, I can use any controls that I may have on my headphones if I have them as well. I go in here, I can do repeats, all that kind of stuff. And this whole music menu is accessible from within a workout mode as well. So you don't necessarily have to be um, on this own menu. So you can go into the workout mode and you can easily access it just by swiping from the right hand side to get over into the music. Okay, at this point, I think I've shown you basically just about everything. Um, there's a couple other, you know, ancillary features, like um, if you wanted to put on contactless payment cards, like your credit card, you can do that by tapping this button up right there. Uh, if you go into the options here uh, for safety and assistance, this allows you to do uh, instant detection. So here is where when you're in the middle of a run, a bike or a walk, and you were to either crash or stumble or fall, whatever the case may be, it would alert your predefined emergency contacts. So it would send them an emergency notification with the word you are and tracking for where you are. Uh, you can cancel that, of course, if you end up being fine, but you've got a number of seconds to go ahead and cancel that. The same is true as well for uh, assistance. So if you're potentially, you know, in a, a sketchy place and something's going on, you want to alert people that, you know, they, you need help, but you want to do it in a fairly discreet way, you can hold this button down until you hear three vibrations and it'll go ahead and alert. So if I show you that right now, I'm going to hold it down there and that's not three seconds, it's three vibrations. So get just a second, we'll start here. There we go. And now it'll go ahead and start setting that alert. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this before it gets there. Um, but that would go off and send to my predefined uh, contacts to go ahead and uh, kind of show me where I am and hopefully they'll be able to help me out. So there you go, a complete look at the watch of the Garmin VWACTA 4 uh, from a user interface standpoint. Also check out my full in-depth review down in the description right there. Um, I've got that just posted up as well. So plenty more information on things like GPS accuracy and heart rate accuracy and all that goodness is again down there on the bottom. Uh, if you found this interesting, hit that like button down at the bottom or the subscribe button. I really appreciate it.